I am Dr. Gerard Francisco, the Chief Medical Officer and Director of the Neuro Recovery Research Center at Tier Memorial Hermann. This is the research center in the hospital where scientists from the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation at UT Health are conducting studies to find ways how we can help our patients recover better. We have around eight laboratories and centers here, one of which is the Center for Wearable Exoskeletons, where we are studying different exoskeletons or lower limb robots to better understand how we can help people walk better after a spinal injury, stroke, or multiple sclerosis. To help us do that, you see, this is not the regular floor. Underneath the platform are sensors that will give us more information about the way he's walking. And you may not see it, but somewhere here are cameras that are picking up some of the activities that he's doing while, while he is walking. And we see that in this computer. So using this motion capture analysis, we better understand how a person's gait or walking changes with the use of the exoskeleton. As I told you earlier, we have eight laboratories and centers within this bigger research center, and I would like you to see some of them. This is very cool what they're doing here. This is the Mayo Neuroengineering Laboratory that is directed by Professor Ping Zhou. What they're doing here, among the many studies that they're conducting, is picking up very faint muscle activity. After a stroke or a spinal cord injury, even if a person is paralyzed, there is still a chance that there's a very faint muscle activity that we may not see or feel. But using this setup, using an EMG, you can pick up those very faint signals. And what you're doing is amplifying those signals using this computer setup in order to make it a bigger signal that can then stimulate the muscle, or in this case, we're using a hand robot. At this phase of the research that they're doing, they're looking at the setup between this pickup of the muscle signal and the robot, but hopefully in the future, we can directly stimulate the muscle so that the person will be able to use the hand after a stroke or a spinal cord injury. It's pretty cool, isn't it? We are now in the Neuro Rehabilitation Laboratory that is directed by Dr. Sheng Li. Dr. Li is also an Associate Professor of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation at the University of Texas here in Houston. He has a very busy clinical practice, but on top of that, he finds the time to do research so that he can help his patients recover better after a stroke or after an amputation. He invented this device, it's called the Breestem, and this is a very cool contraption because it is the deep breathing of the person that triggers an electrical stimulation that hopefully will help the person recover better after a stroke. He can also use this for people who have significant pain after those who've had amputations or they got the limbs cut off. Um, he received the funding from the National Institutes of Health to study that better. So this is really a very cool setup that we have here. Very simple, no surgery needed, but he will be able to help a lot of our patients recover. Seeing this big chair here, you might think that you are in your dentist's office, but you're not. You're actually in the neuromodulation lab where I am with Dr. Nurayos Batiran, who's showing how to use this brain stimulation. This is pretty cool because no surgery is required for this. All you need is this coil, but we also have an MRI. It's a picture of the brain that guides her where to deliver the stimulation. This is pretty neat because this, the, uh, Dr. Yos Batiran has used this uh, device uh, to study how we can help people recover movement of the hand after a stroke. She's also planning to use this in people with spinal injuries and in those people who have trouble speaking after a stroke. Now, in addition to this device, which delivers magnetic stimulation, I have a simpler device here. This is called TDCS that delivers electrical stimulation to the brain. But the intent is pretty much the same, which is to activate certain parts of the brain to allow the person with a stroke or spinal cord injury recover movement or speech. Hey, when I ask you about robots, I am pretty sure that you will think of those robots that you've seen on TV or in the movies. This is the real world. This is my real world in our laboratory. And the robot that we use here is this robot that was developed by our collaborators from Rice University. Professor Marcio O'Malley and I have been working for almost 10 years now, trying to figure out how we can use robots to help people with stroke and spinal injuries recover. In this setup, we even went up a notch because we're collaborating with the University of Houston with Professor Jose Contreras Vidal using this white cap that looks like a swimming cap 
but see all those wires there? Those wires are picking up brain signals or EEG that we can see in that computer and I hope you can see that in the screen because that one is really, really neat. Um, and, and what um, Nikunj is doing here is that he's processing those brain signals and converting them to a large enough signal that can deliver a stimulation to help the person move the robot. So if someone is too weak to move the robot to use it for exercise, that extra boost from their brain activity that becomes an electrical stimulation will now help, will now help her, uh, him or her move this robot throughout the activity. I want to show you a couple more things. Many of the patients that participate in our research study are not able to stand up himself or herself. They need the support of something and that's why we have this support system. It's a device that allows them to stand up and use some of the robots and other devices that we have to make them walk. Also, did you notice the mask that she's wearing? That's a mask that collects a lot of information about how her body is using up energy as she performs the different things that we have them do during the research studies. We have a lot of studies looking at how we can make people walk better, but we're not just interested in making people walk faster or walk longer. We want to find out how these devices will be able to allow a person use up the energy more efficiently. It has been my pleasure to give you a personal tour of the Neuro Recovery Research Center at TIER. I hope you learned a lot about what we're doing here, and I do hope to see you again in the future when I can update you on the results of the research that we are doing here.